how long have you put in hours to get to where you are today? Well, I first moved to Indiana when I was like 13, 12 or 13. Um, a lot more training than here. Uh, seven hours a day, six days a week. Uh, every once in a while we get a couple more days off if it's after a competition. But every day we're going at it. Every day? Yeah. What keeps the drive alive? Uh, seeing your idols accomplish that. Um, now knowing my idols and being friends with them. Uh, them telling me stories about all of it makes me want it even more. I want to rewind back to, you know, around the time that you and I first met. You started diving at the age of five. At what point did you say, you know what, I'm going to be an Olympian one day? Well, I've always had that little thought in the back of my mind that I wanted to be an Olympian, um, but I didn't have a plan when it was going to happen. Uh, and so for it to happen now, at 17, I was expecting, you know, more 2024. Because um, I personally didn't feel ready as I could be but it all worked out. Do you feel like you're an Olympian right now? Or is it something that's gonna hit you later? Uh, I don't, I don't. Uh, all my friends FaceTimed me last night and they just were asking me how I did it and what it was like in that event, in my head, what I was thinking about. Um, I think it'll hit later. Okay. There were some moments on Sunday. The one that's very vivid to me is you standing here with the flag draped over your shoulders. Talk me through it. Well, you know, I walked over there to my coach. He gave me a hug, and he whispered in my ear. He was like, I calculated it. Like, it's not possible. Like, you're, you're going to go. You get up on the podium, and you're in the number one spot. You're yeah. not an alternate. You're not the runner-up. You're in the number one spot. As you stood there, was it starting to sink in that you'd actually won the yeah. springboard? At first, um, I didn't look at the scoreboard after my last dive. I just looked at the little TV on the side of the pool where they showed the scores. Um, I knew that I was on top, but I didn't really, do, I, I didn't think about it. I was just like, okay, like, what happens next? Like, I gotta watch and see if I can, if I can do it, actually. Um, but yeah, standing on the podium, seeing all my friends, my teammates, you know, my mom, my sister, my grandma, all just screaming for me. The crowd was just erupting. It was the coolest moment. Um, your mother was on TV quite a bit mm -hmm. during the broadcast. Could you hear her as you were diving when no, you came up I, out of the water? I try to block her out. <laughs> um, she sends me a text before every event. I look at them. I just don't respond to them. The only person I responded to during that event was my sister, Erin. She was just texting me, just hyping me up throughout the event. Um, and even if she didn't text me after a dive, I would text her because it's like a superstition that I have. It was just like my routine that was going and mm -hmm. I just wanted to keep that routine. Can you tell us about the message? <laughs> um, just hyping me up, just <laughs> telling me to keep going. <laughs> Private messages, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. We can't be privy to yeah. it this time. Um, without those messages, do you think that you've been able to maintain your focus? Without your coach in your ear, do you think you'd be able to maintain your focus? No. No, I learned all of that from my coach. Um, just all the mental training that he's taught me, all the stories he's told me from the previous Olympians that he has brought to the Olympics. Um, and the system that he's told us that works. Um, you have to believe in him, uh, and I did. Um, and the system worked. Yeah. But the one thing you did tell me before is that you know you nail the dive, not so much how you enter and come back up, it's how you come back up and hear the crowd. Yeah. So when did you know, oh, I got that one? Actually, on my second to last dive, I was in my hurdle, and I had a really good hurdle. It was the only hurdle that I got that was good during uh, my prelim semifinal final. Um, and I was like, okay, I was like, this is going to be really good. I, like, I, somehow I knew, um, and actually I thought I did two and a half flips instead of three and a half. Um, in the semifinal... Throughout all my dives, I was able to slow down in my mind in each dive where mm -hmm. I was and how to get from this place to the right place. Um, and in the final, everything was just all automatic pilot. Mm -hmm. I could not think or do anything. I just had to go. So you come up out the water after that dive. What do you hear? Just the crowd just screaming. Um, I go up for a second and go back underwater to <laughs> swim back in. Um, but that feeling, 
I think about it underwater yeah. and I come out and, you know, I still have to be composed. I still have to, you know, focus. The competition's not over yet. So, yeah. That's what you live for? Yeah. That moment? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. How did you then watch the rest of the competition and, um, and not get nervous? I didn't really watch the competition. I would only look at the scoreboard. I didn't even look at the scores or anything. I would just see where my name was. Um, and the fifth round is when the camera crew came over to me and they're sitting there while I'm just trying to you know, just sit there, relax, take a deep breath. What made me realize I had a chance was when I went over to my coach before my last dive and he was giving me my cues before I would go and he was shaking a little bit and I noticed it. He was shaking a little bit. I don't know if he was nervous or he was like, I, I can do this, um, but I toned that out. Um, I just needed to do my last dive. You toned a lot of things out. Yeah. You toned out your mother. You toned out your coach. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm in my own little world right yeah. here. Um, you mentioned your idols, the guys that were your role models as divers. And I know where David is in your heart and, and how good he is and how much you've watched him. What was that embrace like? What was that moment right there after you know you had won and he came over and talked to you? Um, well, Steele Johnson, he came over to me after my dive and he handed me David's ring because David still had to do his last dive. Um, and when I was, you know, with the flag and all my friends, I didn't even see him come up. He just like kind of just like hugged me and I was like, oh, and I realized it was David. It, that moment, I don't think I could ever get back. Wow. Was it almost a passing of the torch? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So what responsibility do you think you carry forward now, knowing that, no, he's going to be back here in the States? Mm -hmm knowing what he meant to you and what you mean to him. How do you carry that forward now? Does, is there a responsibility, you think? Um, I think there is a responsibility. Um, I wouldn't say the responsibility is, you know, no one's expecting me to win or do anything. Like, there's no expectations. Like, I made it to the Olympic Games. I'm going to try my best. You know, I'm only 17. There's another Olympic Games I can go to, possibly. Uh, there's still a lot more improvement I could have. Um, you know, I texted David yesterday, and I, think, I thanked him for giving me his ring and what that meant. And he texted me, and he was like, you know, I'll be here. Send me a text, and I'll send you a text, slap you in the face, tell you that you're good enough. Um, but, yeah, David, he's a wonderful man. Cool. Do you doubt your abilities? Um, sometimes. Um, like I said, I didn't think that I was going to make it, and I didn't think that I wasn't going to make it. I just wanted to dive and I also talked to Allison Gibson, one of my the other Olympic teammates, and she kind of changed my mindset a little bit. She told me that she wanted to put on a show for the crowd. Mm. You know, they bought tickets, they came to watch, they wanted to see a battle between the divers. And I thought about that, and um, my friend Max Weinrich, he called me last night, and he told me that Greg Luganis in an interview a long time ago that he said that he wants to perform, he mm. wants to put on a show. Mm. And that, that just stuck with me. Cool. So what happens now? I honestly don't know. <laughs> um, you know, I leave in, I think it's a month mm -hmm. for the games. Mm -hmm. You started at the age of five. What got you on the diving board in the first place? Well, at the Bowen point over there, um, I was a swimmer, and then the coach, Mary Ann McCain, my first coach, uh, I was watching the divers, and I wanted to try it, and she was my first coach. She taught me all my first dives and everything. She texted me, and that was a really special moment. And, and she put you up there, and the rest was history? Yeah. Really? Never looked back? Never looked back. Never? Even on the platform? Even on at the, the age of five? <laughs> <laughs> Because I know that's what I watch you do. And I go, I remember the first time I shot you guys up there. What were you, seven years old yeah. at the time? And I was going, what is that little kid doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, tell me about TikTok. How did you get started in TikTok? It was just like a fun thing that me and my friends wanted to do. Yeah. I got it, you know, posted some dancing videos some diving videos. Some of them blew up. I got a little bit of a following. And I don't really use it that much anymore. I never took it seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, just for the fun of it. But you know that you're known as the TikTok dancing diver. Dancing diver, yeah. What would you like to say to the people who have been there with you all this time that have helped you get to where you are? 
mom, dad, your friends, your coaches. Do you, do you ever stop and go, man, without these guys, who knows where I am today? I think about it all the time, you know, yeah. the sacrifice that my family has taken for me to move away at such a young age, you know, to pursue this career. Um, I thank them for being hard on me um, and to learn and to grow as a person, um, kind of living on my own, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I live with a couple of different host families, um, the sacrifice they've taken for me as well. Um, my coaches, the opportunities that he has given me, the lessons he's taught me, I can all just take with me forever. What are you looking forward to the most? Opening ceremonies. Yeah. I think that's going to be really cool. There's a reward for all of your sacrifice, and that's going to Tokyo now. Do you ever stop and think about the sacrifices you've made and go, it was all worth it, or do you go, well, I wish I could have done that one and that one and that one and still be where I am today? I sometimes have those thoughts where I've, you know, missed uh, senior prom, you know, graduation with all my friends, being able to see my friends grow up as well. You know, I've, I've just, I've been away from all of them for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and when I come home, I see a couple friends every once in a while. Um, but this is, you know, it's all business. Yeah. I got to do my job. That's what I'm, yeah. that's why I moved away. Yeah.